What's up, it's Cinema Shogun here, and ever since that video started circulating online of Shanquella Robinson being attacked by one of her so-called friends, Dejeuner, a rumor started swirling online as well that Dejeuner and possibly some other friends out of this group are on the run, or they are, they are in hiding. Now, I have been working trying to figure out if these rumors are true or not. And I still do not know for sure, but what I can tell you for sure is this. All six of these friends deleted all of their social media accounts. They all used to be on Facebook. They all used to have other forms of social media as well. And after this situation happened, they all deleted their accounts, but not before all of them got exposed. So we have all of their names. We have all of their pictures. We know of all of their social media accounts before they were deleted. Now, you tell me if that sounds like something someone innocent would do. I mean, if you have nothing to hide, why are you deleting your social media accounts? Now, I cover a, enough true crime cases to know that even when you're not guilty, even when you're not a suspect, if you're just someone that knows someone that, you know, is involved in one of these true crime cases, often you get harassed. So I understand that sometimes people take down their accounts. But for all six of these friends to delete their accounts, I think that shows that there was something going on here. But to take it one step further, this group of friends, it's not like they came back to America and immediately went into hiding and immediately disappeared. No, they had the audacity to go sit down in Shanquella Robinson's mother's face. And one of them, I believe one of Shanquella Robinson's supposed best friends, he went over there almost daily. And it's like these people were eating with Shanquella's family. They were feeding them bogus lies. And as soon, as soon as that video came out of Shanquella getting attacked, none of these friends have talked to this family again. They were all talking to this family before that video came out. But once that video came out, this family, or at least from what Shanquella's mother says, she stopped hearing from them altogether. Cold turkey, just like that. They were in her face before that. One of them was almost over there every day. And in ways, I think he was just trying to fish for information to see what they knew. Trying to keep an ear on the inside. And as soon as he heard, oh, y'all saw the video? Never saw him again. So I'm not sure if these people are on the run. I'm not sure if they're in hiding. But in a way, they are in hiding already because they've had communication with this family and they cut communication with this family as soon as the video came out. They erased all of their social media profiles and now it appears that a local reporter in the area actually went to a couple of their houses trying to get them to talk. Let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and roll the clip difficult to obtain, so I called phone numbers associated with all of her friends who went on the trip. The subscriber you have dialed is not in service. Most of the numbers are now disconnected, but two of them went straight to voicemail. Sorry, mailbox is full. I texted both of them and also paid them a visit since they have Charlotte addresses. No one answered at the first store and the same with the second. And while no one was home when I rang the doorbell this afternoon, a neighbor did tell me this morning they spotted CMPD outside this person's home. So now no one wants to answer the phone. No one wants to reply to text messages. And everyone out of this group decided, hey, let's all delete our Facebooks and our social media accounts. And none of them are answering the door. Now, of course, they are not obligated to talk to that reporter. They aren't obligated to pick up the phone. They are not obligated to text back. And they can delete their social media accounts if they want to. 
But, I mean, they have to understand that in the court of public opinion, this is making them look hella guilty. And if they were attempting to seem innocent, then their actions after Shanquella's death definitely don't scream like, you know, it, it doesn't seem like the actions of someone who is innocent. You know what I mean? It doesn't scream innocent to me. In fact, it screams guilty. You might as well paint the word guilty on all of these friends' forehead and just shove them out in the street because it's clear as day that they are feeling guilty. I'm not going to sit here and say it's clear as day that they are guilty, even though it looks that way, but it's clear as day that they feel guilty. Why else would you respond this way? If my friend died in Mexico and media outlets wanted to talk to me, then I, I would probably talk. If I was Shanquella's friend, I would want her story being out there. But it's clear, at least it looks that way, that this whole group came up with a plan. After Shanquella's death, this whole entire group conspired about what they would do next. Because they aren't operating here as individuals. It's like they're operating as a group. I don't believe that every single last one of them put their hands on Shanquella and caused her to lose her life. So why are the other ones going along with this story? It's because it's all part of this group plan. There is a group effort to not allow the truth to get out there about what happened to Shanquella. Now, oftentimes when you have cases like this, law enforcement will label someone as a flight risk or not a flight risk. And the way I see it, so, all right, you have to understand that law enforcement takes a lot of things into account when they look at someone and decide if they're a flight risk or not. They look at if they have family overseas. They look at if they have a passport. They look at how much money they may have. You know, they look at various different things. But in my eyes, I don't care if you have zero dollars and zero ties to anyone anywhere. Anyone can be a flight risk. And anyone that is capable of killing their own friend is capable of running from law enforcement. And I said that with the last case I covered. The Quentin Simon case, because they said that the mother was not a flight risk. But in my eyes, anyone that's capable of killing their own child is capable of running from law enforcement. So I'm not so sure that this these group of friends, if they're going to take this line down. I don't think all of them are going to come together and all try to, <laughs> as a group, escape the country. But I don't think that they're necessarily going to walk down to the police department and turn themselves in. I don't think that they're necessarily going to make this easy on law enforcement. So I wouldn't put it past them to run away. And I say that because, all right, one could say, you don't know these people, send them a Shogun. Why are you judging them? I don't know Dejeuner. I don't know any of Shanquilla's other so-called friends. But I do know about some of their actions. And after what happened to Shanquella, after Shanquella died because of one of them, you know, after Shanquella died at the hands of one of her friends, they ran away. They didn't wait. They left Shanquella on the living room or in the living room of her villa. For the maid to find. So what I'm getting at here is if they would run away and leave Shanquella behind, then what makes you think they wouldn't run away from law enforcement? You know, we don't know much about these people, but the record already shows that they don't, they don't necessarily handle these situations well. And they panic in these situations. They run in these situations. So why wouldn't they run now? But regardless if they're running or not, they're going to get caught. And I fully believe in my heart 
that Shanquella Robinson is going to get justice. You know, with a lot of these cases, we don't have video evidence. And in this case, we have literal video of some of what happened to Shanquella. And, you know, as I watched that video a couple of more times, I couldn't help but feel like there must have been something. How can I put this? There must have been some type of built up animosity there. You know, I understand that sometimes friends get into altercations. Sometimes friends get into fight into fights when alcohol is involved. But the brutality of that attack, it, it makes me think like there was some built up hatred there. This wasn't a spontaneous, you did something to me and it pissed me off a little bit in the moment and we got a little too heated and it got carried away. This was built up animosity that Dejanay had for Shanquella that had to have been there well before they went on this vacation. They were only in Mexico for less than 24 hours before Shanquella was beaten to death, or at least it appears that she was beaten to death. So that's not some, oh, we had a slight little altercation on this trip. To me, that looks like built up animosity that that woman has been harboring, that hate in her heart. She was harboring hate in her heart for Shanquella and still went on this vacation, smiling in her face before ultimately attacking her and possibly causing injuries that led to her death. Although we know that there is supposedly a second video out there of Shanquella being attacked again. But for now, I want to know your thoughts. Do you think Shanquella Robinson's friends are all sitting there patiently waiting to be arrested? Do you think these rumors are just that, rumors? Or do you think that it's possible? Or do you think that maybe they already have ran? Do you think they're hiding? Why do you think they deleted their social media accounts? Let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.